Uh, Atlas uh, allows you to automate these processes. So uh, if you do something manually, uh, if you work with your imagery manually and uh, you need to generate some reports and find some things on this imagery, then you can try Atlas. Uh, in which areas uh, you can use Atlas? Very, very different. And uh, everywhere where you uh, get uh, aerial photography, just a raw imagery, or you need to work with orto mosaics, you can benefit from Atlas. And these are only, um, only several uh, examples uh, where Atlas can be used. This example is provided by uh, our clients. So you can use it for road quality detection, for sure. You can count things like ships and boats on the sea. If you have uh, some specific data sets, for example, imagery from the uh, ultraviolet camera uh, with uh, uh, corona discharge indications, then you also can use Atlas to select images which contain these uh, corona indicators. Also, you can use Atlas to work with imagery from different urban areas and for planning a uh, few activities in civil engineering areas, like work with cars, uh, taxis, vans, count buses, etc. Again, you can use it, for example, to detect road marking and signs. And also you can detect the complex things like uh, uh, vegetation areas with uh, uh, complex shapes, water resources, or for example, solar panels. And these are only a few examples. So if you think something in mind, just don't hesitate drop a line in, in, in our Q&A section. If you have some area that, that you want to discuss more on this webinar, just send a message. We'll, we'll, we'll try to, to, to uh, touch it at the very end of the webinar. So again, just, just to summarize, uh, what can be processed with Atlas? You can feed uh, raw imagery, JPG or PNG files, that you get directly from your drone or I don't know, from your handheld camera. That's what you can do. That's what you can upload to Atlas, store and process. And you also can work with uh, orto mosaics. So you, we, in Atlas, we have a photogrammetry processor embedded, but if you don't like it, you can always uh, take um, orto mosaics from your favorite uh, photogrammetry tool, like, I don't know, Pix4D Metashape or anything you like, get this product and upload uh, to Atlas. And uh, your main algorithm of working in Atlas is pretty simple. So if you want to build your own uh, uh, detector or some object, you need to do three things. First of all, of course, you need to annotate a small fraction of data manually, just to tell to the, uh, our machine learning algorithms what you want to, uh, what you look for. Then you uh, <clears throat> make training uh, with Atlas, and I will show you how you can make it. It's pretty easy, it's just a matter of clicking a couple of button clicks. And uh, after training, you get your first result. Atlas will generate you automatic annotation. If you're not satisfied with this annotation, you can repeat this process. Correct your uh, initial annotation, and then train it one more time. So pretty simple. Now let's uh, switch to demo. Uh, okay, 
So I hope you can see uh, application window. Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, Atlas is a web-based platform. Uh, first of all, it allows you to structure uh, your imagery data properly. You can uh, organize your data into projects. Um, on this level, you can see several projects <clears throat> in my workspace. And also, uh, inside the project, you can have multiple data sets. And uh, depending on your uh, main uh, workflow, operation workflow, the meaning of these levels can be very different, but uh, as, as, as a very common example, I can tell you that, for example, if you need to uh, make regular uh, photography of the same place, then this one place can be can give a name to your project and uh, each uh, survey, for example, weekly survey, can be stored in separate data set. So, uh, let's uh, go to some examples. I will show you the uh, data set with a map for the mosaics. Uh, so, and here you can see uh, two types of objects, two types of annotations, cars and vegetations. And I'm going to uh, explain uh, what, what's new appeared uh, in our latest versions. So for those who are already familiar with our software, that will be useful for those who are not familiar just uh, <clears throat> see what Atlas can do for you. So first of all, uh, uh, again, to support our main workflow, annotate manually, train your detector, and get the result. These three main steps. So first of all, Atlas provides you with uh, tools to make your manual annotation. We have several tools to annotate objects of interest. There are also uh, two, uh, two figures that can be used to annotate background because it is very important for the uh, uh, artificial intelligence to know what is the object of interest and what is the background. Properly distinguish these uh, two types of uh, these two entities. So uh, let's, for example, check cars. So if I will expand uh, the car label, which is on the right side of the screen, uh, you will see two main blocks, manual annotations and detected objects. So first of all, I will show what, uh, how manual annotation looks like. So if we want to detect cars, then we need to add uh, is to define uh, several figures uh, for existing cars. And here I used a polygon tool to uh, manually add these figures around several cars on the street. I also, I also had to specify uh, to the neural network what is the background? And this dashed red uh, line uh, defines uh, the background area. And after that, so, and basically, uh, I can repeat this manual annotation uh, several times if I'm not satisfied with, res with detection result, but like when you, <clears throat> uh, even if you annotate this small amount of objects, even uh, now you can make your first training. To make a training, you need just to press the train button. And after that, the system will uh, prompt you uh, whether you want to create a new detector from scratch or you already have 
uh, existing detectors that you want to improve. If you create new, then what you need to do to select object uh, for training and detector name. After that, you press the train one more time and training starts. Typically, in our cloud-based solution, the training takes from 15 minutes to one hour, depending on the uh, area size, on the amount of annotation. But uh, after that, you get a notification by email, so you don't need to sit in front of your screen and wait uh, uh, when the process will end. So you will get a notification. So you can do other things, and even you can switch to other data sets in Atlas and work with the data. So after training, you will get uh, you will get uh, first results. And I will not I'm not going to run training right now. I will show you these results. Here you can see the results of the automatic detection. Uh, so these figures were generated by the system. And uh, another thing that I want to explain you is uh, something that we added recently. And uh, mm, this was something that uh, uh, we uh, uh, received as requests from our existing clients. So just mm, look at this uh, white uh, area. Uh, it is, uh, this area we call it working area, meaning that uh, when you run a detection process, you can either select, uh, either choose a detection on the entire map, or you can specify that detection um, should be run only inside the working area. That is a very efficient tool because it allows you to, first of all, to speed up the detection process significantly. Also, if you are not, if you, if you are not sure that the detection uh, will be very accurate at the, at, at, the, at the beginning of your training process, then again, you will, uh, using working areas, you will receive results faster, you will spend less megapixels for uh, detection and uh, you will be able also uh, to, <coughs> uh, uh, to uh, add additional knowledge to the detection process because for example, in certain cases, you know for sure that a certain type of object cannot appear in a certain area. For example, car, it is, it is <laughs> very, uh, low probability that you will, for example, if you want to uh, detect cars, for example, you will find a car uh, in the sea, yeah, if you have a bay, a bay area, yeah. And, and the same thing about other types of objects. So with working areas, you can limit, uh, limit uh, the territory where your detection uh, will be executed. And also, for example, if you want uh, to check uh, only uh, specific areas, like you, you, are, you, you want to know how many cars are on a certain parking areas, you can annotate this uh, parking areas, specify working areas there, and you will get uh, car count only for those areas. So for example, uh, in, in this data set, we have three parking areas. And this is the first one. And that's the second. And that's the third. So uh, all the detections happen only, automatic detections happen only within these working areas. And for each working area, you can see the statistics, how many cars are inside this area. And also uh, for each area, uh, you can download the detection results 
as a GU JSON. So, uh, for example, if you need to analyze this data in external systems, in external GIS systems or computer-aided design system, you can always export your detection results and use them in uh, third-party solutions. So, uh, what else is important? I want to point your attention that for each uh, Orta mosaics we have information. So for each Orta mosaics you know how many hectares it occupies, what is the ground sampling distance, what is the use space in megabytes or gigabytes, and also what is the size of megapixels. This information is useful during processing and also you can just, that can be useful for some other reporting tasks. Also, uh, for the same area, you can have multiple uh, uh, object types. And here we have two object types, cars and vegetation. And vegetation is just another type of object. It has a very uh, complex shape. Uh, you, you, car is typically convex in ge geometrical sense. Uh, vegetation is not convex and uh, it can be of a very, very different shape, but our uh, machine learning algorithm can detect also uh, such uh, complex objects. And uh, again, about the process, uh, it is absolutely the same. If you want to detect vegetation, again, you need to provide some manual annotation at the very beginning. And this is what, this is what I annotated manually. So I uh, annotated, added a couple of figures denoting uh, trees, uh, and also with this rectangle, I uh, specified the background and then I trained uh, my model. So the process is absolutely the same. All those three steps, annotate manually, train, and get uh, your first results. And this is how the results look like. And for each area you see uh, in the hint, you always see the label type. In this case, it's the vegetation. And also you see the area size. So now it's like 1,900 square meters. And again, uh, for uh, all the detection results, you can always download these results as GeoJSON. Later, we will add support for other file formats like Shape and DXF. For now, uh, it's only GeoJSON, but as far as I know, GeoJSON is supported by all the popular GIS systems like Quantum GIS, like uh, ArcGIS, and others. So it, 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 it can be used widely. So uh, let's uh, switch uh, to uh, another case. So I will show you another data set. Um, and uh, we will continue our um, uh, continue speaking about uh, civil engineering analysis. Now I'm going to show you an example uh, how you can uh, get a road quality report. This is a data set provided and actually processed by one of our clients. And his goal was to detect uh, uh, areas on the asphalt surface, which are not good, which can be repaired. And that's what we got as a result. So I will zoom as much as I can. And actually the ground sampling distance for these specific orthom mosaics is quite, quite good. So it's, 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 it's around one, one, one second, two centimeters. So I, I will disable labels. And as you can see, I hope you can see that, there, that this part of the road is not very good and it can be repaired. And I'm switching back 
the detection results and as you can see the detection is quite accurate but again uh, these detection results they can be exported but uh, also as you can see um, there are many small pieces that might be not interested for uh, your client maybe they just want to know about uh, big areas which can be repaired and they are not interested in very small uh, small areas which uh, can be left untouched. So what you can do here and um, we analyzed uh, what we can do here to make the process uh, as fast as possible to our clients and not to force them to reprocess um, reprocess imagery uh, in our client and thus spend additional megapixels and decided to implement uh, a filtering option here. So what we have? So uh, you have two options. First of all, uh, we can filter detection results by confidence. Confidence is a probability which uh, assigned by the neural network to the figure and it specifies how confident neural network in the result. So for example, if I will show uh, uh, results which uh, are, uh, which have a high confidence level and will apply this filter that you will see that some results disappear. I, I will show it one more time, so I will disable it. Yeah, you see a lot of small things that might be not interesting to the end user. So if we increase the quality uh, of uh, the detection without any additional processing, just we apply this filter, then uh, some results that might be just a junk, they, these results disappear. That's one thing that you can do and which easily can uh, save a lot of time for you. And another thing that can be useful for you is um, filtering by the object size. Uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, you can get uh, from your client the requirement that they want to uh, receive information only about defects on the road, which are bigger than, I don't know, seven square meters. And let's apply this filter. And as you can see, another part of results disappear. So we can increase it, for example, for 10. And now we have, now we have only, you can see in this detection, section you can see that there are only three objects detect detected. So you removed a lot of junk from uh, your uh, result set. And now you can export the resulting uh, data set and provide it as a report. Then the road maintenance team can take these results and uh, actually approach uh, uh, identified locations and make a decision whether it's worth to make any repair there or not. And uh, another example that I want to show you is again, it's a real life example. It's uh, from um, agriculture. So I will show you two fields. We will start from a very interesting case from our client from Israel. Uh, so they, uh, made an aerial photography of the field and their task was to identify uh, the weed on this field. There is such a thing that which is called field daughter. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite um, invasive weed, uh, weed uh, and um, it's very important uh, not to allow to spread this weed across the field and identify it uh, uh, at an early stage. So again, I will, I will disable annotation so you could see these yellow areas on the field and these yellow areas uh, uh, 
denote the uh, read. The green uh, areas are healthy areas. So our goal was to identify accurately these yellow areas. Uh, and then again, this uh, detection result uh, can be used to minimize the spread of this weed. So again, the principles were absolutely the same as I already demonstrated to you. So we made uh, several manual annotations. So we defined uh, for the future training what is object of interest. The solid lines define solid blue lines define uh, object of interest, and dashed uh, lines define the background. Uh, and then after training, uh, we got this result. And these results were exported again as a GeoJSON and they were transferred to this GIS system where, uh, uh, were analyzed by the field owner. Actually, uh, for other types of uh, diseases, uh, this uh, vector layer can be used, for example, to as uh, uh, as as a, as a uh, like a um, flight plan for uh, the automatic steering system installed on the tractor, and we have such examples when people use uh, the detection results as a as a flight plan for the tractor. So uh, also uh, for each uh, for each label, if you have many labels, uh, many object types on uh, in your area, you can always uh, specify a unique color for each uh, for each uh, object type. And uh, these uh, settings are memorized for entire data set, so you can always share. Uh, this results with uh, other participants of this project. And the last example that I want to show you, it's again from the uh, uh, agricultural area. Uh, it's a big field of almond trees. And with Atlas, we identified the uh, top parts of the trees and uh, use this for a tree counting. And as a source material, we used a rendered um, uh, multispectral imagery because you, you may notice this uh, very special coloring. So um, yeah, and as you can see, the almost for every tree we have uh, a red point and again, if you want to calculate only trees uh, in a certain sector of the field, you always can use a working area and see the statistics for this uh, specific uh, working area. Um, basically, that's it um, with the demonstration. I want to shortly return back uh, to my presentation, and then we will uh, we'll go instantly to uh, the questions and answers. So, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's an important question that we receive from time to time, and I want, uh, again, to explain how we sell this solution. Uh, it's available as a cloud-based solution. And um, if you are okay with uploading your data to cloud and you don't want to set up any, um, any, any on-premises installation, then um, you can visit our website and go to the pricing section and select uh, the price plan that uh, perfectly fits your needs. And also for um, uh, for be, uh, we, we we have a forty day a fourteen day uh, free trial, so you can you can test system without uh, without paying anything. But 
we also see another demand from uh, large organizations, from uh, governmental customers. Um, so we see that uh, our clients also want, in some cases, they don't want to, sh to send their data to some cloud. Even it is, if it is a secured cloud and very well protected, but they want to have everything on premises and we provide such an option. So uh, what is important to understand? So all the functionalities that you see in our cloud can be deployed in your data center. Uh, of course, uh, we uh, agree on pricing uh, on a case by case uh, uh, approach. But if you are interested in a such on-premises solution, you definitely need to contact our sales uh, and explain uh, the approximate amount of data that you want to store in the system, the number of users that you want to have in the system, and then we will get back to you with a proposal. So uh, before q and I uh, just one more time want to show you uh, that uh, on our website, uh, recently we introduced a new section, the Learn, where you can find uh, a getting started tutorial. Uh, it consists now of 10 lessons, but it introduces all the uh, basic and most important concepts how to upload data to the system, how to uh, properly structure it, how to annotate it, how to train your detector for raw imagery or for orta mosaics. So uh, this should be definitely uh, a, a starting point uh, for you if you have any questions, but of course, as for any other our projects we, uh, and products, we do have a uh, support line. So uh, you can always drop us a message and we will uh, help you with uh, any of your questions. Okay, so let's walk through the Q&A. Uh, uh, Okay, good. So we have now we have eight questions, uh, and I will just uh, go one by one. So the first question is from Hermanos: uh, Will it be possible to identify uh, manholes and power lines on roads? Uh, yes, uh, it is possible. Uh, because manholes is, is it like the, it, it's, it's a very good object for such system. Uh, power lines uh, also, uh, depending on what you want to uh, detect. Uh, so if you want to uh, uh, detect the uh, like a pillar or tower itself, definitely possible. If you want to identify, for example, insulator, uh, it's possible. If you want to identify wire, uh, it can be a bit more complicated and depends a lot on the resolution of your imagery. So, but uh, general answer is yes, and you always can try, you can upload your sample data to our system and try it. Um, the question from Scott, can this work for orta mosaics in a local or a custom coordinate system? Uh, for now, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we do not support uh, local or custom coordinate systems. So we work in a global coordinate system, but uh, you always can reach, uh, but again, this topic is typically, is not that straightforward. So um, uh, we are very open to uh, such conversations. So please, uh, if you are not sure, uh, will your data work in our system, just uh, drop us a message 
uh, to our support and uh, give us several examples of your coordinate systems or projections that you want to use and we will give you an answer. Uh, uh, the question from Alan, where will the recording be available? Uh, I think the question is about the recording of this webinar. Uh, if that's the case, then uh, uh, we will, as usual, we will uh, publish a recording of this webinar uh, on our YouTube channel and uh, for all participants we will send a link. So, yeah. Oh, great question from Manfred. Uh, the Apple software is only in English available. Uh, uh, actually, uh, in two weeks, uh, we will uh, add to Atlas other languages. So, Atlas is prepared for other languages. So, in two weeks, uh, Spanish will appear in Atlas and also Chinese. If you need other languages, please uh, drop us a line. So, actually, you can you can post if if you actually if you if if you are expecting some language, you can post right now uh, in this Q and A, and we will process it later. So yeah, Atlas will support multiple uh, languages um, shortly. Uh, hi, uh, okay, question from Ricardo. Hi, what is the GSD of the survey? Oh, um, if you mean what uh, was the GSD of the of the examples that I've shown to you, uh, the GSD was very different and uh, we, can, we can check it together. So for example, for this uh, agricultural field, you can see that GSD is around uh, one and a half centimeters. Um, for example, for uh, our first uh, project uh, the GSD is around seven centimeters. So uh, it's uh, actually it's a very good question because um, for machine learning and for uh, many objects you do not don't need to have an extremely high resolution, an extremely or extremely low GSD. So seven. 10, 15 centimeters, depending on the object size. So this uh, uh, low resolution can be also okay. Uh, basically, uh, the rule of thumb is if you can uh, distinguish uh, your object with your eyes, then most probably algorithm will also be able to identify such uh, object. Uh, uh, the question from anonymous attendee, can it be used for active detection of uh, uh, do it yours uh, for, for active detection of drones? Um, <laughs> I, I think no, if you are, if you are thinking about the drone detection system that will you know, can percept in real time, uh, the drone, uh, while it's approaching some location, no, the system is slightly uh, not different. So I think here the answer is no. We, we definitely can detect everything that uh, uh, captured as imagery or orta mosaics. Later, later, we will introduce some detection capabilities for video, but I still I, I, I'm not sure that for drone detection, it's, it's a good solution. There are, there are other solutions on the market. Um, so next. Uh, um, the question is from, the question from Trevor, can I detect geological features, minerals and rock uh, colors if they are similar? Uh, yes, you can. And, um, Actually, we have a very interesting example of using Atlas. Uh, when uh, we, shortly we will publish it as a use case, but uh, in short, uh, uh, we have clients who used uh, not the camera, but they used other sensors uh, like uh, uh, echo sounder, uh, 
uh, to uh, acquire data uh, and then they generated um, a duty out of this data, uploaded it to Atlas and detected, uh, detected objects on this duty. But if your minerals or rocks, they, if you capture them with a normal camera and again, uh, the, the level of general, generalization for such objects is quite high, they have different colors, then yes, definitely you can uh, upload your data to Atlas and, uh, and, and try to detect or make this, I don't know, either to detect them as a small simple objects or make a territory segmentation similar, similar to what I've shown um, in case of vegetation, yeah. Um, the question again from Anonymous MD, uh, does it work for DJI drones? Um, if you mean that does it work for uh, data acquire, acquired with DJI cameras? Yes, of course, it perfectly works with uh, data acquired by DJI cameras. Um, a question from team, can digital elevation model and point clouds be utilized for height? Again, very nice question. And I can uh, unveil a little, bit, a little bit our roadmap because again, uh, shortly uh, in a very few weeks, uh, we will add support also for elevation models. So you will be able to upload elevation uh, on a 2D map and see uh, the um, uh, heat map uh, of your elevation. Also make uh, filtering, uh, filtering uh, by height and also combine, uh, combine the results of uh, automatic detection on imagery uh, with your elevation model, for example, to eliminate uh, from your uh, elevation model some artificial objects. For example, I don't know, you have a heap of sand and you have an excavator on top of this heap and you want to remove excavator from your elevation model. That's what you will be able to do with Atlas shortly. Uh, another question from team measurements. Uh, um, yeah, as you can see, uh, as you can see, we uh, uh, we now we can show the area size of the detected figure. Uh, uh, later, we will add more uh, measurement tools for linear measurements and uh, oh, okay, sorry, measurement heights. Uh, yeah, we will, uh, when we will add support for elevation, um, uh, you will be able to see the height values for certain points, if you mean that. Okay, uh, I see no more questions. Uh, so, uh, okay, thank you, Tim. <laughs> I also like this feature, actually. We are also have it in our development environment, which I can't wait to make it public. Okay, um, thank you very much. So uh, if you have any other questions, so actually send them like in a minute or we can wrap up for today. So I hope you uh, found um, something useful for your uh, business and uh, yeah.